change now. So, all right. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? Welcome to the North Carolina Cryptid and Paranormal Project. I have a guest, Mike Pearson, with me tonight. Hello, Mike. Hey, brother. How you doing? Good, good. I'm just going to do a quick tribute tonight for what we talked about. Um, you know, as we all know, today's 9-11. You know, 20 years ago, 9-11 happened, the World Trade Center. This country was attacked by terrorists. And um, needless to say, it was a bad it was a bad situation for this country. And, you know, fortunately, a lot of people united as one. We all became a united country, and we all helped each other when this happened. So I just want to give a moment of silence real quick and just, you know, thank all the fallen heroes that, that rescued people in World Trade Town Center. All right, and I'd also like to say uh, a rest in peace for fellow researcher Johnny Henderson. You know, he, he just passed um, yesterday, this morning, and I'm sad to hear that. And, you know, he, he was a good researcher. He was from the Cryptid uh, Studies Institute, and he left behind his son, Elijah, and his daughter. And just, you know, give my condolences to that family because they were great people and just sad to see stuff like that happen. But, um, yeah, all right. So, Mike, what would you like to talk about first? Well, <clears throat> I'm 59 years old. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina is my hometown. And uh, I've seen a lot of things. Most people, you know, try to say, oh, you didn't see this, you didn't see that. But I uh, had a good childhood and didn't have any abusive parents or anything. Uh, we moved, we lived in an area called Hickory Grove, North Carolina. It's right outside of Charlotte, near Dorida and all that. And uh, we moved from there to a place called Midland, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. And it was actually the original uh, flow store road that has the fire department and the gin on it. Well, my parents, they bought, I don't know, maybe a thousand acres of land first because it was very cheap. Got into farming, got into raising horses, Tennessee walkers got into cattle, crops, whatever, whatever my dad could get into. Well, I guess I was, I was going to Bethel school. Uh, uh, maybe I was in the fifth grade, uh, riding the bus, like all the real kids used to do, ride the bus, had a long driveway, which was a paved driveway, luckily, but uh, it was a mile and two tenths long three quarters of the way down the driveway riding my bicycle home we had black angus at the time we had over 150 head of them so for some reason i glanced over to the left coming down this little hill and i saw what i thought was one of the black angus that got out stopped my bike i didn't get off of it hollered over at it thinking it was a cow and when i was like shoo get back over in the field well, that right then, at my age, I saw something stand up at least five feet. One, one of the big ones. It was maybe a teenager, one of these things. Mm -hmm. And it looked at me, and I looked at it, and I'm talking not 100 feet. I'm talking less than 50 feet away from each other. Oh, wow. But it was on the other side of a fence, barbed wire fence, six strands, okay, Plus, there was a big ditch, gully, whatever you want to call it. All I know is I put put my fastest gears in my feet, pedaled back home, got in the house, crawled under my bed. Until my parents got home. One of the workers on the farm, when he saw me, he said, what's wrong with you? You're, you're white as a sheep. And I said, uh, there's, there's something up in the woods up there. And I, I just, I, I, I don't know, really shaking especially at that young age. Parents got home and they're like, where are you at? I said, I'm under the bed. They said, what are you doing under the bed? I said, uh, there's something out in the woods that I've never seen before and it's not one of the cows. And they drove me out, pulled me out from under the bed and they said, what is wrong with you? You're white as a sheep. I said, there's something out there I have never seen in my life. And so, but that was, that was the only time I ever saw anything on that farm. Now, there was areas of that farm that we had that, you know, later on and got a dirt bike and stuff, be riding and always felt like something was watching me. Uh, there, 
every now and then you get a wild pack of dogs come through stuff like that but yeah. we never had any cows disappeared or anything bad happened to the horses or anything but later on in life um went on to central cabarrus high school and didn't do all that great with schooling and everything but got away from that uh married a girl uh, she was my one of my high school sweethearts i went out driving a tractor trailer for several different companies around charlotte and everything got away from that my first wife got killed by a drunk driver two weeks before Christmas, 87. So when I left, I went to her funeral. I drove my own truck, left the funeral, told my parents, I said, I'm going to just take a ride. I just want to try to clear my mind of all this because it, it was a shock because I passed over the area that night when I came in, Hotel California was playing, which I found strange. But anyway, not even really go into that, but got my truck, a 1987 Toyota 4x4, had on suit and tie, no change of clothes, $30 in my pocket, and uh, got on Interstate 85, just, just down from what they call, uh, I guess, Still the same thing, Cannon Hospital. Got on Interstate 85, headed northbound. That's all I remember. I remember coming back up. I figured it was two and a half hours later coming back up, going from, I guess it would be southbound. Went back down to Midland. Here's all these cops. because My dad was involved in law enforcement, the FBI, and a few other things. Mm-hmm. And the cops are like, they realized who I was. They said, where have you been? I said, I've been gone two and a half hours. What are, what, what's going on? They said, you've been gone two and a half weeks. Wow. I said, impossible. Okay. I didn't have any radiation burns. I didn't have anything. They sent me to the best psychiatrist as they could find. And they said, well, apparently you've had a full-fledged abduction encounter. Now, where you see those people talk about men in black and everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, they made a couple of movies where they had that pin mm -hmm. that they would uh, like a flash type thing. Yeah, Dude, right. that's the only thing I could think. Oh, yeah, little you memory, know? little memory eraser pen where it takes your memories away. So, so yeah. you, only, you only remember what happened like before this past experiences happened. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Because, like I said, there's no way that I'm gonna be gone two and a half weeks with. Mm -hmm. $30 in my pocket. I wouldn't even have had enough room uh, money for a motel. Okay. Plus still having the same amount of money in my yeah, pocket. You had the same, it makes sense. You had the same amount of money when you, when, when you came back, sir, you, you had yeah. to, even if you had to get gas, you would have had less money. So obviously you were, something happened where you were taken from a certain area and then you were putting back in a certain area and two weeks, two yeah. weeks went by. That's crazy, man. Wow. And see, the thing is, um, I, I didn't really realize it back then, but back in, let's see, 2011, I guess, 2012, I started donating blood. Well, taken from that, I found out I was O negative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I have read where lots of people that have been abducted are negative <laughs> blood. Mm -hmm something about the blood that the aliens or whatever and i'm not talking about you ever i didn't see grays i've never seen a gray in my life i've never seen some of these other things people talk about the ant people and other things that's out there i don't remember, i don't like that i have no recognition of where i was at mm -hmm. but the same thing is me and my truck truck was even on the basically the same amount of gas Okay, same oh. thing. How am I going to be gone two and a half weeks? Thirty dollars in my pocket, mm -hmm. and only hit and almost a full tank of gas. Wow. So something really weird. And still to this day, that was thirty plus years ago, still to this day, I wake up at night trying to remember what happened, and it really bothers me. Okay, I don't think I was tested on. I mean, I do have something in my right hand. My center finger is about the size of a, I'd say a small BB, but there's no, there's no entry, uh, 
where it was something would have been stuck in there. Now, doctors have tried to cut this out before, and when they get close to it, it speeds up my heart. So they said, if it's not hurting you or anything, we're just going to leave it alone. Oh, wow. I've had other encounters, not abductions, and I don't want to jump around too much because I don't mess up no. with your people this is, and everything. This, this, no, this is, this is this show. You're the guest. You could say, uh, you could talk about experiences, well, encounters, however you want to go about it. It's all you. I just, your the time. thing is, lots of people out there, you know, they're, they're either busy with their family or they got so much on their mind. They're not really paying attention. Mm -hmm. There's more than one kind of alien craft. There's more than one type of alien. The, the Christian people have been told, which I used to be one, and I'll tell you about that later on. You see, the Christian people were led to believe that all aliens were demonic spirits. Okay. We see when you strip away the books out of the Bible, like Enoch, mm -hmm. and I say I think it's 172 books that got stripped out of the Bible. Yeah, they were all okay. omitted. Yep. And the Catholics were the ones that did it. No offense to your Catholic listeners, but the popes, Constantine, all of them. Constantine elected himself the first pope. Mm -hmm. That's where the cross come from. I could go into some serious stuff, but probably most of your listeners won't understand. I know it's more about Bigfoot. So, no, this is about everything cryptid and paranormal. About everything you, you can do whatever you want, man. This is your time, and everyone okay. everyone likes to go down the rabbit hole. So let's do it. Okay. Well, after my first wife got killed in a car wreck, and after quite a few years, I went on in the military. I went into something because I had. I wanted to go in the army because that's where all my mother's side of the family, my dad's side of the family, they was all in the army. Okay. And I'm not going to say I wasn't tough enough to be a Marine, but I wanted to be in the army for somewhat, some strange reason. And I went into a special elite force. We were special forces recon. We were called a ghost. Mm -hmm. Now, that right there, I'm not going to say a whole bunch about it because we didn't have a rank. Mm -hmm. We went in, searched areas. We went in under the dark of night. And what a ghost is, is somebody doesn't have rank, somebody doesn't have a name, somebody you don't even know it's there. Mm -hmm. Spent my four years in that. I'm not going to go into what I've seen and what I've done. Because yeah, that's just a not gonna go there. Well, we, we, might anyway, get, we might get shut down if you start de de delving down that hole. So, what's what's yeah, it well, <laughs> that's that's well, yeah. And see, that's that's the thing is, you know, most people will forget about stuff, and that's the thing that I do. I try forgetting about a lot of things because if it's unexplainable, most people nowadays say, Man, that guy's crazy, or he's he's on something, but see, it's like this. I don't take pills. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I mean, I smoke a cigarette once in a while. I might smoke a cigar. But the drugs and everything out there, mm -mm, it's a dead end road, especially pharmaceutical pills. You know? So I'm, you're not talking to somebody that popped up on this or that or anything else. But anyway. Um, well, I've gotten to know you for some time and we've talked quite a bit. And you, you, the knowledge you've shared with me is blow my mind away so i truly believe you're a credible person and i will definitely vouch for you and that's one of the reasons why you decided to keep your 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 profile um you know yeah because it's like i say i mean i've had things happen to me that uh most people couldn't imagine and i've had my life threatened more than once by so-called government mm -hmm. military okay so they're like like I say, I don't want to get you shut down, so I ain't going to say much more about that because I know what will happen if I say one word, you'll be gone. The show will be gone and everything else. But anyway. We don't want that. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want that. But um, anyway, got out of the service, had my wife and all that and everything. Uh, bought a trailer and put it over in Harrisburg, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, pretty nice trailer which i saw it was a repo and everything but still was nice 
um, had some strange things happen. The people sold me that trailer never told me exactly what happened mm -hmm. or what was going on with that trailer. But now you talk about paranormal. Yeah. Come first hand with that. Had padlock on, had had my doors padlocked because there was some pretty bad people in this area where I was living and everything. And I had my guns and certain collectibles and stuff. So I didn't want somebody just breaking in and taking what they want because mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd be on the road for a couple of days. I drove a truck right. for certain companies around Charlotte and everything, overnight and everything. But then uh, come in one afternoon, unlock the padlocks, walk in the house, and the smell was like really bad. And I'm like, what in the world? Power, let's check the power. The power's still going. Something had got in my trailer through padlock doors, mm. front and back, and come, nothing <clears throat> could come through the windows. Mm. Raked out everything out of my refrigerator, raked all the canned goods out of the cabinets and everything. And I was like, really? This, this don't so, make any so sense. So it, it, it came for food. It didn't come for your personal belongings. It just wanted food. Mm. So it wasn't a person. Yeah. It wasn't a it was person. Something, something big, big, hairy, uh, and probably 800 pounds to, to be able to br break down the padlocks. No. The padlocks were still, still on the door. Oh, yeah. That's wow. What had happened? What had happened, that trailer that I had bought from a repo place over mm -hmm. in Charlotte somewhere off North Tryon Street, mm -hmm. I do remember that. I had asked him, I said, well, what is the red stain from the little bedroom to the back door? And they said, oh, well, the kid had red Kool-Aid. I said, well, he must have had a gallon of it. He done spilled it all down through the hall there. Oh, wow. Now, me being naive, I didn't think much about it. Well, I picked everything up, cleaned everything back up. Went back out on the road, gone another week, come back home, and all the furniture's piled up in the cent in the living room to the ceiling. Oh crap. Okay, so I never saw anything. I did have this I had a black pit bull and it was mixed between bull and chow. Mm -hmm. Super nice dog and everything, had a good disposition, but when he's outside, he loved being outside. But when the nightfall come, I said, I won't come in the house. He did not want to come in the house. He always sat there with a low growl or he looked when he was in the house, he's sitting on the couch. He looked down the hall and he just growled and everything. I couldn't really place it and everything. And I had some friends of mine come over one time and they had their uh, two little nephews and everything and uh, kind of camped out, whatever, you know. These kids woke up in the middle of the night screaming and hollering and everything. I was like, what in the world is going on? I run back there and the kid said, there's something. There, there's something in the hall. And, mm -hmm. You know, a little kid can see things that adults can't. Just like little dogs, animals, they can see things. They can sense things that humans can't because our oh, yeah. minds mostly are closed. Well, they pick up that frequency that we can't because we're, our, our frequency is a different on another level. And the kids and dogs can pick it up because they're more on that level to pick it up. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, the kids, those people, they, they said, man, you're a good friend of ours, but we're sorry. We, it's just something wrong with this trailer. So uh, a couple of years later, I got off from what I was doing, driving and everything else and closed the trailer down. And uh, my parents, they got tired of it, whatever. And, because I had people were griping and everything else in that trailer park. I said, well, rent it out. Rent it out. I don't care who you rent it out to. You can get whatever amount you want for it. I'm not going back in that trailer. Okay, well, they rented it out, and some strange things started happening with the other people. They moved out. This one moved in. They moved out. Most people wouldn't stay in there more than a couple of weeks mm. if they could do that. So I got a job, cousin was a terminal manager for overnight transport down in Gaffney, South Carolina. So I pulled a trailer down to Blacksburg, South Carolina, I'm not remembering what year. I'm thinking maybe 79, maybe. Okay. Uh, maybe. Well, no, it's more than that. 85, maybe. Yeah, maybe 80. Anyway. But uh, pulled the trailer on down there and had it put in a, in Blacksburg, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, working third shift, uh, you know, 
go in really late at night because I didn't have any family or anything at that time. Parents still alive, but they were doing whatever they wanted to do back in Midland, North Carolina, and uh, didn't have any problems. I figured whatever it was, was maybe I was sitting, that trailer had been sitting on top of a old Indian mound or something, because there's lots of Indian mounds around this country. Nobody knows what's oh, under yeah. the ground, okay? So I thought maybe it was some spirit hooked up onto that. Well, uh, we're down there about a year, year and a half, I guess. And uh, since I was the last one that I, they hired, I was the first one to get laid off when yep. overnight started going down, going out of business. And it was winter time, and I, stupid me, I forgot and didn't cut off the water into place. And people call me a couple of days later. I'm back in Midland. And uh, they said, they said, Mike, uh, your, your trailer pipes busted, places flooded out. And I said, we cut the white, you know, everything. I had the power cut off and everything. Went down there and it was a total disaster. So I started pulling the carpet up. Mm -hmm. That's when I found out it was not Kool-Aid. It wasn't Kool-Aid. That was blood, wasn't it? It was blood. Mm -hmm. And it was a bad trail of it, too, because it come whoever, whatever, that little bedroom, the older trailers had like, you know, you mm -hmm. come in the front door, you can have yeah. the kitchen, living room, little hall, mm -hmm. for the small bedroom. Okay. Well, that blood trail ran from that small bedroom to the back door. Oh, wow. I don't know. I'd probably, apparently they couldn't get out the door and they probably bled out because there was a massive amount of blood mm -hmm. still. But when I saw all that, yeah, I got the carpet out and I walked away. I told the people, I said, I don't have the money to move this thing back. Uh, and they, I said, can you just put it out someplace? So they, they took a truck or whatever, and they pulled it out in the middle of the field. Now, doesn't have any power to it, doesn't have any water to it, mm -hmm. still locked with the padlocks. Uh, one night they called me and they said, uh, your trailer's on fire. I said, what do you mean the trailer's on fire? It doesn't have any power to it. They said, this thing is blazing like somebody had, you know, doused it with gasoline or something. Well, on me, because I didn't have no insurance on it. It wouldn't pay me nothing. Yeah. But it burnt down to the down to the frame. Wow. So whatever unrested <laughs> spirit was in that thing, whatever caused it to ignite like that. So, yeah, I've seen things. I've, I've experienced other things that most people would probably not want to be around this earth anymore but then from there let's see um there's my wife but then a few other things went up a place called banner elk north carolina oh yeah good old country countryside banner elk up in the mountains oh yeah well it used to be nice you know i mean it's a beautiful place to go but it's like yes a lot of people Look at different areas like Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, man, that's a beautiful place to go. It's a good place to, you know, get bring your family up and everything. Yeah, well. Not when I was like, working there about 10 years ago when I was working there. It wasn't, like, it wasn't as nice as they've made it out to be. I mean, there's some parts mm -hmm. downtown, but by the waterfront is nice. Yeah, but anything, the battery. anything past that is is not nice. So. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, I know I it's worked not out nice there. at it's all, nice. you know. It's not good. You got to be arm to the teeth if you're going around at night by yourself for sure oh yeah oh yeah now, i mean there's a lot of paranormal yeah. downtown off king street and all that and everything. Yeah, I, I did a ghost tour out there on the cemetery and it was pretty amazing i mean i was getting all kinds of orbs from an old cheap blackberry phone i was getting all kinds of orbs from taking pictures in the cemetery it was pretty wild oh yeah well i mean there's a place uh outside it's just still in part of it's in colleton county and part of it's in charleston county uh but it's a place called edisto island and there's a super amount of paranormal down there on that island mm -hmm. it's sort of like a mm, newer version of hilton head it, but there's a lot of old right. folks live down there a lot of a lot of the old what we used to call them darkies and they don't have no problem say you know problem black people and, they, and i'm not prejudiced i mean i i don't i don't have a prejudice thing to me okay but the things like up back up in western north carolina there's things up there the sasquatch is up there and there's something up there too more prevalent more towards the cherokee nation mm. what they call them uh, the little people 
-hmm. and they don't live in a house. I'm not talking about midgets. They no. basically live in the ground, just like I believe Sasquatches do. Mm -hmm. They live in some sort of, or it could be interdimensional. I'm not sure. I've tracked these things before through the years, find the hair, find different things, the trees bent, trees crossed, mm -hmm. things that look like little teepees out in the middle of nowhere. And the thing is, the reason I say I believe they're interdimensional, when you're tracking something and it hadn't climbed a tree, mm. hadn't gone up a bank, nope. but the footprints stop. Footprint just stop, sir. They just stop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some I've talked to other people and we talk about the smell of these things, okay? One person said they're sort of like a skunk, okay? If they get nervous or they feel threatened or maybe if they're trying to keep something else away from you than that that scent gland i guess maybe but i can tell you lots of people say that they've had never smelled a sasquatch well i can tell you right now i've smelled them mm -hmm. and i smells worse than death itself worse than a septic tank in the hot summer days but that's all another story but up in western north carolina i used to do uh, hardwood flooring mm -hmm. and I'd go different places all over Western North Carolina and Tennessee and everything and got to really like them certain areas and everything moved up into an area called uh, Carter County Tennessee it's just on the other side of Beach Mountain mm -hmm. and started running into Sasquatches there because these things what they do come in in the evening or whatever you could you could see them, you could see them. By the time you get up to them, they'd be gone. They wouldn't come out, you know. And they what they do? They'd come around late at night and they'd slap. They wouldn't throw rocks. They'd slap the side of the little house I was yeah, staying. Slap the side of your house, building, mm -hmm. yeah, windows, yeah. doors. And they didn't, you know, as far as destruction, they didn't, you know, mess with it. Well, I've always keep my animals basically inside or in a in a good good chain link fence or something so nothing ever gets to them uh there are wolves there there's timber wolves way up in western north carolina and pretty good size animals these stand up from their from their feet up you're looking at seven feet in the air but they're not what they what people what they're talking about dog man and all that but they could be uh cousin to them maybe or a hybrid maybe some kind or of hybrid hybrid, hybrid wolf mm -hmm. A hybrid wolf. But the thing is, you know, when you people hear about Sasquatch, you know, or giant Epithecus or Bigfoot, you know, and you got skunk apes, you got the abominable snowman, you got different different names for them all over the world. Um, I forgot what they basically call them Bigfoot over in Russia or Sasquatch. Yeah, you know, Yetis, Almasti, Yeti, yeah. um, the Almasti Alma. Yeah. But, uh, like I say, through the years after my parents, I lost my parents in 1998 up in Banner up North Carolina. And uh, I just didn't want to stay around anymore. So I moved down to a place called Edisto Island, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And that was in 19, between 1990, well, I lost my parents in 98. So between the latter part of 98 to 1999 mm -hmm. moved down there stayed in a camp place and everything and until i could get my lot set up like i wanted got another trailer and it wasn't haunted this time luckily but uh there was i started seeing things down there and meeting people especially the you got the geechee and the Gullah people down there you know, black people down there super nice if they like you they don't like you or they, they won't tell you enough. But I started listening to some of the rumors that these people were talking about and everything. And I said, yeah, there's there's something that walks on two legs down here. They didn't know. They'd never known the, the word Sasquatch, Bigfoot or any of that thing. They said, we don't know what it is. A lot of them are real superstitious down there. Mm -hmm. um, they had long, I'd say probably 150 years ago down there. That's uh, what they call the uh, voodoo. Okay, so a lot of those descendants of those people down there, they're super skeptical down there. But 
when I was down there, somebody told me about a crip. And I said, well, what do you mean a crip? And uh, they said, well, the, this girl, her last name was Legree. I don't remember her first name, but anyway, it was back in the late 1800s, I think it was. And she come down with some sort of uh, flu or pneumonia or whatever. Well, she went into a coma. And back then, they didn't know what a coma was. They figured mm-hmm. she's dead. Mm-hmm. And they didn't embalm people back in the end. So it was a very wealthy family on Edisto. And uh, they put her in that crypt and they sealed the door. When she woke up, when she woke up and you can still go to this, this crypt and see where she tried clawing her way out. You can see where she just down to her probably nubs. Okay. Then after, I guess after her death, suffocation, starvation, whatever. Yeah, every, yeah. Every time they would go to put a door back on this, well, she, the spirit of her, whatever, it was sealed. Mm-hmm. Well, and you still to this day, I don't know about now because it's been quite a few years ago since I've been down there. It's been over 10 years. But down there where this place is, they put a steel door, like a, I don't know, not steel door, it's like bars or something to keep people from going in and right. tampering with it or anything else. They can't keep one on there because whatever the supernatural force is mm-hmm. blows those things right out. Oh, wow. So when I went down there, people down there, because I, I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any family or anything else, you know, no brothers, sisters or anything. Still don't have don't have basically anybody except my dog. But um, people down there, they were, you know, kind of strange anyway. Good people. But I thought, well, if I'm going to be down here on this island by myself and I'm running a small business down here. I need to let these people think a little something so some of the guys they were like where are you going man i said well, i'm gonna go have lunch with this girl and they said well who is it i said her last name's legree and they're like legree and uh, yeah i'll be back for a while dude i don't know sounds crazy but i'd go down there and sit in that crib because there was like a bench in there and i'd talk to that spirit and i never had nothing but pure peace now, a lot of people, like I say, a lot of people think that's probably crazy as all get out. But just because you can't see somebody doesn't mean that spirit's not right beside you. It's like my parents. I, I can't see them, but I know they're around. People, mm-hmm. just because they've lost somebody, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people think, you know, when you die, you're going straight to heaven. Mm-mm, that's not what happens. Okay part of you might go there it depends if you had a perfectly pure life but not everybody's there and i'll tell you more about that some another time maybe but anyway down there and the one send people down there they're like man this guy <clears throat> you don't want to mess with this guy he, he's he's having lunch with dead people and i said hey just because you can't see these people well We got cut away. Still there? there? I'm here. <laughs> See, we're, we're starting to know. piss somebody off tonight. I don't know, but Par- uh, it's the okay. paranormal must paranormal must have been kind of ticked off there a little bit because that's kind yeah. of strange. Because I've got three bars and I'm running 4G on you right now. So yeah, I, I I've got know. I've got um I don't have why don't I have I, I, my phone is 5G but. My my yeah. internet my internet is AT and T fiber optic, so I oh, definitely well, good luck. it's not it's not my it's not well it's not my internet because fiber optic is the top deal you know, the cream of the crop when it comes to internet. So, well, that that's something else. I know what goes on with AT and T, but yeah, well. uh, that's another story somewhere down the road. But anyway, I have seen there's there's snakes. There's mm-hmm. snakes on these islands. Uh, they call them barrier islands, but like Edisto Island, there's one way on and one way off, unless you've got a seaplane or a helicopter or a small Piper Cub. Right. There's only one way, you know, travel in. But uh, most of those roads down there are sand road. And where I had my trailer setting up, it was right on the edge of a marsh type thing. And you hear loud things at nighttime hitting that water. 
And I had a couple of dogs down there. And the next day, the guy told me, he said, man, if you want to keep your dogs, you better keep your dogs in your house. Mm. I said, what? He said, we got alligators down here 15, 20 feet long. Your dogs would be gone. Mm. And he'd showed me pictures of where people have the dogs out. And the only thing they got left there is a collar. Uh, but anyway, I was on that island for a few years. And uh, met this girl down there. She was a few years older than me. But uh, I was going to church and all that stuff at that time and everything. But we dated a few months, whatever, six months, of something like that, I guess. And uh, we went in and got married. You know, she didn't have any family. Well, she had some kids, but they never come around her and stuff. And she was a good old girl. And thing was, she was old negative, too, just like mm-hmm. me. But she was older. And she was more open-minded than probably what I was, okay? Because she had a unusual, I don't know what you call it, spirit or knowledge that was beyond anything I'd ever seen. Uh, She would tell me, she said, well, when we leave here, we're going so-and-so. And she described it down to detail. And I'm like, how do you know this? She said, well, she said, I just have intuition. Mm. And see, at that time, I wasn't really paying much attention. But after quite a few years of studying my negative blood, mm. it's way more than what average person is like this. Being O negative blood, I can donate blood to anybody on the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. But if I need blood, I can only get it from somebody like myself, being O negative. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And there are other things, you know, I talk about people trying to watch us and same thing about the encounters people have with aliens, uh, some people with Sasquatches, some people with the paranormal, something about that negative blood, because only 15 yes. percent of the world's population has negative blood. OK, and that only come on the scene between 30 and maybe 35,000 years ago. But everybody else is positive blood. Mm-hmm. to see where that comes from with the Anunnaki. And right. most people kind of leery about the Anunnaki, but I've been studying it for a good 10 years now. And what I find out talks about Enoch and everything mm-hmm. goes on. Yeah, I'm jumping around. I'm trying not to. No, that's okay. But it seems like the Anunnaki, they were like the like the originators of doing this, um, you know, genetically manipulating the species to, to get, the, mm-hmm. um, you know, to get certain hybrids the way they wanted well, them, you know? The reason, the <clears throat> reason that they, I'm not going to say the main reason, but the Anunnaki, I think it's down in Peru, they found a mountain that totally had the top shaved off of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, back thousands of years ago, supposedly there was, there were no D12s running around. They didn't have laser cut, laser cut, you know, micro machinery to do that either. But so yeah, so, but anyway, what I heard about the Anunnaki, they created uh, two groups. Okay, they had the positive bloodline people mm-hmm. to mine the gold. Okay, they were, they, were, they were the worker bees. Yeah, but see, there's a major something about the gold. Okay, to them, it probably doesn't matter. But see, when they found that whole mountain shaved off and then they found something, uh, we have something like at modern day time, it's like a big machine when they're packing a road down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they found all these like funnel looking things. Mm-hmm. And they figured that that was some massive machine because the top of this mountain is not just a couple of miles, it's over seven miles. Wow. But the thing was, they could never find okay where'd it go where'd the top of it go the flat area and i can say i think it's down in peru it's either peru or maybe i can't pronounce the other name but they can people look it up the information's out there Mm. but uh anyway with the negative bloodline yeah i've got a book matter of fact it was wrote printed in uh, Canada. Mm. They wouldn't let it be printed here in the United States because it goes against everything the Bible is about. But it's called uh, 
from the international bestseller. Arthur, you're, let's see, Arthur you're breaking up. You're breaking up of the Holy Grail. There you go. Breaking up. Okay. Can you, can you repeat? Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Yeah, you are, repeat again. Your voice was pix, your, your yeah. voice was pixelated. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, go ahead. But anyway, it says from the best international. I say from the international bestseller author of the Bloodlines of the Holy Grail, and on the front of it it says Genesis of the Grail of Kings. It says the explosive story of genetic cloning in the ancient bloodline, which they call him Jesus. I call him by his Hebrew name, Yeshua. Mm -hmm. But the guy's name was Lawrence Gardner. Now, I found it very strange because when I got this book, underneath this book was the books of Enoch. Oh, wow. These books cores correspond, and these books was made was printed in Canada. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I see you face to face, I'll loan you this book. Absolutely. Because it yeah. tells you... I've had some people read that book, and they said it's totally unbelievable. Hmm. And it changes your whole mindset on things, I'm sure. Changes your whole mindset on a lot mm -hmm. because the thing, and uh, Christian people are not going to like this, but uh, every time when I used to go to church and everything else, you know, it says if you stumble, you fall, you know, you, you ask for forgiveness, and, you know, you redo your works over. <clears throat> So, uh, you know, I got baptized, but I've been baptized more than most people could imagine. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever, in my mind thinking, well, this is the only way I can purify myself, you know. But that was man-made religion. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when you stumble and fall, you don't have to have everybody and their brother praying for you. What's, what's in your heart? What's in your soul? What's in your spirit? You know? But when you find out the truth, there's a passage in the Bible that says the truth will set you free. Well, I found that truth back in 2006. Okay. 2006, mm -hmm. my wife was having open heart surgery down in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. She died on the operating table. And at the time, I was in a wheelchair, so my, my legs and everything else gave out on me because I got a, had a really bad back and everything. And I've been praying to Jesus. I'm like, really, Jesus? You let my wife die? I sponsor churches. I sponsor revivals. I've been faithful. Go to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. This is all you got for me? And I was extremely ticked. Okay. Just lost I don't blame you. Yeah, I, don't, I don't blame you. Okay. Well, a nurse comes out five minutes later, and she said, your wife come back. I said, what do you mean my wife come back? After five minutes, I said, that's impossible. And they said, yeah, but she came back. And we'll go finish the surgery. And, you know, they put her in, in, in acute intensive care, which is all glass, okay? It's not regular, you know, intensive care. Yeah. So still at that time, I didn't know much about the negative blood or anything. But after surgery... I walked into that room, and when I walked into that room, those computers, the monitors and everything else went haywire. Oh, wow. Alarms, buzzers, everything, people running, the doctors, nurses running down there. I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? They said, I don't know. We just, you know, step back out of the room. When I stepped back out of the room, everything was fine. Now, mm -hmm. I carry a certain amount of electricity in my system for some strange reason and what i'm what i should have probably told you mm -hmm. when we first started out my parents my mother was negative blood on t on top my dad was positive mm -hmm. blood i was born on my dad's 50th birthday mm -hmm. but the thing the most unusual thing in all which i wish my some way i could have recorded it back then or whatever my grandfather was a Southern Baptist preacher. He told my mom, you know, she, he told her, he said, you have a son. She said, Papa, I can't have any children. I've been, I, I've had a hysterectomy mm -hmm. and the tubes and everything else. He said, I don't care. He said, but I'm going to tell you like it is. You will have a son. We don't care. He always said we, but he never, even at 15 years old. I'm talking to him and stuff before he died in 77. Mm -hmm. I said, Grandpa, what do you mean we? He never would tell me, but he spoke eight fluential languages. 
But anyway, I was born two and a half years after my mother had a hysterectomy. Oh, wow. My middle name is, my nickname is Mike, but my middle name is Michael. And that's what my grandfather said. My name has to be that. Now, it kind of ties into some things I guess has happened in my life. Mm-hmm. I've been electrocuted twice. I've had Rocky Mountain spotted fever four times. I've been through 16 major wrecks, two major motorcycle wrecks, four years in the in Army. I've had some things happen to me. Most people wouldn't even survive their first major wreck. I've walked away from all of them. Actually, too, but like I say, my wife, being at intensive care, acute intensive care, they put her mm-hmm. over into the other one. And uh, she was able to talk. She didn't have the tube in her mouth and everything. And I said, Diana, I said, what'd you see? I said, you, you're you gone five minutes, and that's mathematically impossible. She said, Mike, she said, we're all in darkness. I said, what do you mean we're in darkness? I said, we do everything we're supposed to. And she said, yeah. She said, but it's not. And I said, well, tell me some more. She said, the Messiah's name is not Jesus. It's Yeshua. Starts with the letter Y. Y S H U A. Same thing. The reason I'm saying this, these names appear in this book. Mm-hmm. Yeshua, Yahweh, all of that come from the Anunnaki. You oh. see, that's what they stripped away the books of the Bible. You go to the original 1611 King James, or 1611 Holy Bible. The big Mm -hmm. gigantic Bible that the King James Bible came from, Mm -hmm. you don't see God, you don't see Jesus in there. You got Yahweh, you Mm -hmm. got Yeshua. It even used to state the old timers, it used to say hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the last 20 plus years ago, I remember, I I do remember that. Remember, like back in the day when I was a kid in church, it was like hallelujah, not hallelujah. And there was always yeah. Yah in the end. I remember that as a kid in church. Mm-hmm. Right? I do. Okay. That, that was taken well, out. My, mm-hmm. Well, see, after my wife got out of the hospital and she was stable enough to stay at home by herself, I wouldn't leave her there too long. Yeah. I knew a couple of old, old preachers. And I figured if I'm going to get information, I got to go to these old guys to try to figure out what's going on. And this one preacher, I asked him, he's about, 85, 90 some years old, been preaching probably 60 years. I said, what is the name Yah? He said, how do you know that name? I said, what is that name? He said, that's Yah is short for Yahweh. He said, that's the creator's name. I said, well, why are you not telling people? He said, we're not allowed. I said, "So so the Christian people are running around. I asked them. On Facebook, I ask them on Instagram. I've even put it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. How come you cannot tell me your God's name? Every God has a name. So when people are saying, well, I'm praying to God. What God are you talking to? You've got hundreds of thousands of gods out here. People in this country are wondering why everything's all to hell. It even tells you in scripture. It says, if my people call upon my name. Not only for I forgive them, but I heal their land. Okay, well, um, all they know him by is God. Again, what Yashua God? Yashua Ben David. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yashua Ben yep. David, somebody posted. Yep. yep. And see, you got people out there. So when my wife, when I told her and acknowledged what she had told me was all in darkness, 2006, 15 mm-hmm. years ago, I serve Yahweh and I serve Yeshua. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm not going to be standing there waiting, thinking that Jesus is going to come down. People even got that wrong. When you hear the trumpets blow, you hear them trumpets blow mm-hmm. and you don't go anywhere. You don't messed up somewhere along the line. But see, people don't understand. They don't read the book. They sit there and listen to some drawn-out preacher that care less about their spirit, heart, and soul. All they care about is how much money you go put in that offering plate. And see, another thing that I tell people, okay, if Sunday is such a holy day, how come it's not in Scripture anywhere? 
You don't find the word Sunday. Oh, it's the first day of the week. I don't care. I want to see the word Sunday. Mm-hmm. But see, the Catholics even admitted changing Sabbath to Sunday. Yeah, so Sabbath, the Sabbath is really Saturday because if you uh-huh. if you look you look at the Hasidic Jewish uh, folk, they, they're the ones uh-huh. that, that that are really into the Hebrew part of the Bible. They yep. sat, Saturday they don't do nothing. They don't drive their cars. They walk. Because I'm from New Jersey, mm-hmm. and, and the Hasidic Jews uh, community, they will actually walk around the town, and they won't mm-hmm. drive their car. They'll walk around town. They'll whatever they do, they'll walk, and they won't do mm-hmm. any working, uh, no, no work at all. And that's their Sabbath day is uh, the well, Shabbat. See, Shabbat. What is Shabbat? Yep, Shabbat. Shabbat. Okay. I, I've tried learning Hebrew. We see, mm-hmm. there's seven different languages. The Hebrew. The Paleo Hebrew supposedly is the main one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Aramic. Before Hebrew, it was Aramic. Aramic's right from the right to the left. Same thing a Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew. Mm-hmm. They write from the right to the left. Okay. When they go in and they so called uh, spiritual men rewrote the Bible, mm-hmm. they didn't know what they were looking at. They didn't have computers back then to say, well, hey, everything's wrote backwards. So they mistranslated. Yeah, the they, whole they, they, they weren't basically. translating it right for, from from Greek to whatever to you know English mm-hmm. or or Latin. So yeah, yeah. Well, see, the other thing is too. Uh, even Einstein said this couldn't couldn't take place. And I've, there's a passage in another part of the King James Bible it says that if uh, it was seventy two hours, because it said. The Son of Man would be in the tomb like Jonah was in the belly of the whale. Okay, now whether that was real, whether that happened, I don't know, but it's in the Bible. Okay, there's 12 hours in the day, 12 hours a night. That's 24 hours. Same thing. 12, I mean, 24, 24, 24, 72 hours. How in the world do you get 72 hours from Good Friday to Sunday morning? mathematically impossible yeah to see the people are not paying attention they're following traditions they're not following the truth mm-hmm. people say oh you can't keep the ten commandments really ten easy commandments and you can't abide by them the reason you can't abide by them is because friday night you're out with the family you're you want to go to a sporting ring saturday same thing not supposed to buy sell or trade just like you said the, the Jews up there, different places. You're not supposed to do anything. Okay? You're, you're not supposed to work. People mm-hmm. around you are not supposed to work. Your labor is not supposed to work. So everyone's, see, got, it, everyone's got it all mixed up. So oh, yeah, they got follow something. Up. How can you follow it's something properly when it's mixed up, you know, just jumbled up so many different ways over the years that yeah. how, how are you supposed to take it anymore? Well, I tell people like it is. Okay? And I don't beat around the bush about it. I tell them, look, I'm not going to stand there at Judgment Day and have to explain to the <clears> Almighty, <throat> Yahweh, why I didn't tell people. Okay, I didn't really come to, come onto your show here to tell everybody, but since there's a few people out there already realize what I'm talking about, they know I'm telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Okay, truth will set you free. But again, too, you strip away the books, like Lucifer says. I have deceived the whole wide world. Mm-hmm. Okay. How could you deceive the whole wide world unless you've changed names, added names, taken away dates, added dates. Mm-hmm. But then with this book here, I see why they didn't let it be printed here in the United States, because if the average person got a hold of this and could spread it out far enough, and you can still find these copies on Amazon and different mm-hmm. things like that. But see, I'll tell you something else most people didn't know. They talked about the book of Moses. Mm. Well, I had at one time before it got stolen the sixth and seventh book of Moses. Oh, wow. Moses was a grand master. He was a wizard. He mm. wasn't who people think he is. Same thing with John the Baptist, what they call him, Johann. Mm-hmm. Okay, when he said he would go to baptize Jesus. Mm-hmm. He wasn't baptizing him what you think. It was about the 33rd degree, about the Mm. grand master. 
Wow. The Grand Master, what people are talking about, they don't have the slightest idea. And people want to say, oh, well, I can't do the Ten Commandments. Well, you're going to be judged by those Ten Commandments mm -hmm. because it's a simple thing. You want to go and believe what everybody's want, traditions of, oh, he died on a cross. Uh-uh. He died on a dogwood pole. He didn't die on a cross. Constantine put that in there. A Catholic put that in there. A Pope put that in there to deceive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mean to make none of your viewers mad or anything, but the truth is out there. All they got to do is look it up. Mm -hmm. The Holy Grail is not a chalice. It's not a cup. It's the bloodline. It doesn't say it's a bloodline. Mm -hmm. And see, they, I, I'm not real sure i've looked at that many many videos talking about uh the burial cloth okay with the image the of the, the shroud the shroud of yeah, the shroud the shroud, shroud, of, the shroud of torah okay yeah. yeah but what they said they tested the blood and they said it was a b negative that's mm -hmm. only one percent of the world's population that has that kind of blood but see it's like this too you no know, when the Messiah was a baby, those mm. caravan, not just three wise men, it was a whole big caravan because they're carrying gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay, myrrh is like a, uh, what do you call it, anesthesia type thing. Mm. Just because somebody sticks a spear in your side and blood and water comes out, doesn't mean you're dead which I have a thing about that. I make lots of people mad. I'm not mm -hmm. saying the Messiah wasn't here, but he broke the, they broke the kneecaps of the, of the two thieves of beside him. So when you break the kneecaps, they can't hold up. And basically when they drop down, they suffocate. Them. Yep. Okay. So to me, something supernatural was going on that they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But anyway, after all that, wife and I, we started taking... I've got a shofar, and you know we we go to certain things. A friend of mine, I've I've known him for years. His name's Michael Rood, and he's over there in Fort Mill, South Carolina. And his wife, she's from Israel, mm -hmm. and he's the one that I learned lots and lots of stuff from. Okay, about Yahweh, Yeshua, the the mm -hmm. moon, the different phases of the moon, like well, it's gone, done gone down where I'm at. But, you know, the first slither of the moon is the first month, the first new month. Over in Israel, they don't call it January, February, because all those names are fallen gods. That's right. Janus, okay, and all that. But see, the other thing is, too, is that people would realize the letter J for Jesus, John, Jerusalem, that's less than 250 years old. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if that letter is only 250 years old, who's Jesus? Yeah. Okay, and what I try to tell people is open your mind, look around, you know, the Holy Spirit is out there. You blaspheme that Holy Spirit, I don't care who you are. You'll never make it anywhere. But anyway, after my wife got better and everything, we... We went out, 2007, I guess, we went out. There was a big meteor shower going on, and we had, there was a place down there on Edisto Island called Steamboat Landing. And uh, what it was was actually the name of it. There was a big steamboat that used to come down from Charleston, and it would dock there, and that's how the people used to get on the island before they had any bridges or anything. But anyway, we're down there, and... There was one other car down there. I guess they were watching the media shower, too. All of a sudden, I saw this humongous ball of light show up. I mean, it was pretty far out there, you know, but it was a humongous ball of light. Okay, one the moon, one any, you know, weather balloon or anything like that. Because you got a, excuse me, you got a lot of military bases down there in Charleston County, uh, Buford, oh, yeah. South Carolina, Marine Base, Naval Base, all that stuff and everything. Well, and I told you before, I look at the sky at nighttime. I'm not too much where I'm at right now because so much trees with the, mm. the leaves and stuff still on them. But I had a million candlewatt spotlight because I 
looked at certain things, looking for certain things at nighttime, you know, and you got a deep, dark forest down there and you can't really see a whole bunch, you know, really want to get out of your vehicle because of snakes and alligators and everything else. So I blinked at this thing. Okay. And my wife, she said, I don't think I'd be doing that. I said, well, it's just a big ball of light. And I said, actually, it's so bright that it's, it's messing my, because I had my big telescope down there. Mm-hmm trying to watch the meteors and everything else with the telescope because I had it hooked up where you could take pictures through it and everything. Right. And uh, on a gravel road, and my wife, she said, she said, that truck, where did that truck come from? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, that that don't make any sense. I said, because there's a gravel road, you could hear that you could hear a vehicle coming at least oh, yeah. a half a mile away on the gravel road but because you got the friction between the rocks and the oh, rubber. Yeah. So you go hear this crunchy sound coming down the road, and it's not fast. There wasn't no crunchy sound within less than a quarter mile. And this truck, I'd never seen this truck on this island. I lived on that island. It was a 1957 Chevy, totally blacked out. No chrome, Ugh. no windows, which I found very strange. No windows, no chrome. But in the headlights, uh, Back there in the wars and stuff, you know, the round headlights had a little slit in them so they could see just a little bit, but the bombers couldn't bit. catch them. Yep. Yeah, just a little bit of light. Well, the thing that I saw, there were green triangles in these headlights. Mm. And my wife, when she saw that, she got in the truck, she locked the doors on me. I said, girl, I said, I, said, I need my weapon out of there. I said, something ain't right. And uh, whatever it was, whoever was driving this thing didn't pull in the spot like you pull in the park. It pulled mm-hmm. kind of a long ways. And I'm standing there, door opened up on this thing. And whatever this thing was, I was thinking a human, you know. And I said, what do you want? He said, we warned you before about blinking at us. I said, what are you talking about? I said, you you mean tell me you come out of that ship up there? I said, I'm going to tell you, dude, whatever you are. Because like I said, I had something in the truck. I could have taken this thing out, but my wife, she done freaked out. She got the doors locked. She wouldn't open the doors on me. So here I am face to face with something that was no Sasquatch. But it was just like the Terminator. But see, the thing I found the most interesting thing about this, there was enough light that I could see what this thing was wearing. It looked like it had been poured into some sort of uniform. Oh, wow. Because there was no buttons, there were no belts, there were no zippers. Looking at whatever it was I was looking at, and I know I wasn't hallucinating or anything. No. Not from being in the war, certain things I've seen. But I noticed in this thing, it didn't have any eyebrows, didn't have any eyelashes, no facial hair, no hair. But the thing I found the most interesting, and and the shoes, okay, I mean, no shoes. It was just like poured into something. When I looked up, and there was at least a two-inch gash all the way around this thing's neck, Mm. it was a machine. And that's why it had a hard time saying we warned you before. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking, I, I don't know what he's talking about warning me before because I don't remember anybody saying anything to me. I've seen a lot of things in the sky, you mm-hmm. know. But like I say, most people were looking on their phones, watching TV, whatever, you know. There's, there's things out in space, out in the sky, and everything else. But anyway, you uh, got these Palladian, these Palladian starships out there, and you know they're oh, yeah. all over. They're all over the place, coming down. You know, visiting our atmosphere. You know, coming in our dimension. However, they're getting here. Oh yeah, it's crazy, well, crazy stuff. Well, the so, same so, thing. That, so was that alien, or what? Did you think that was something that well, was? Well, um, me, it was a, it was like a cyborg. Cyborg. Oh wow! So it was cyborg, probably constructed. I guess you call. Yeah, so it was yeah. probably like possibly alien, alien made. And sent they here made, uh, their te- technology. Well, see, the same thing is. I read where the moon 
is not what people think it is. No, it's a big satellite, right? That's a, single... that's a big satellite. And then right. you got the dark night that's out mm -hmm. here that's supposed to be some sort of alien yeah. satellite. Alien satellite. Okay. So when people say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, or the government says, oh, you're, you know, try to discredit you. Well, you can try to discredit me all you want to. I know what I've seen, and I've told other people, not a whole bunch, but it's like this, open your eyes, look beyond the end of your nose, mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised what you see. Okay? I want my main thing of wanting to see aliens or alien crafts or you, what do they call them, underwater ones? Yeah, you so, you, you, you so. Okay. And even on other store island, my wife and I would sit out on the beach. Basically, in the wintertime, there's hardly anybody down there. You know, mm -hmm. summertime is the only time you have major amounts of people. We sit down there towards the far end of it and everything, and you could see them. You mm -hmm. could see these shiny silver disc looking things shooting straight down into the water. I'm like, oh, wow. know, a plane like that hit that thing at that kind of speed would Damn. smith, you know, turn it into rubble. turn it turn it into rubble, a thousand pieces, mm -hmm. and it'd be a well, probably an explosion yeah. or somewhat of, or of, of yeah, or something. Well, see, that's the same thing down in Puerto Rico. The island of Puerto Rico, yeah, everybody, you know, knows about the top part of it. They just don't know what's underneath it. It mm -hmm. claims to be, uh, there again, claims to be an underground, one, one of the biggest UFO underwater, whatever, what you would call them, a base, I guess. Mm-hmm. Because there's strange activity, earthquakes and everything else that go on down there all the time. People say, and they're hearing things under the ground. Well, you're on an island, you know. What are you going to really hear? But, exactly. like I said, my wife and I, after I found out about Yahweh, Yeshua, the Sabbath, you know, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is still a Holy Spirit. Okay. But uh, we got us trailer down there together when I had... I don't remember exactly what happened. I think my cousin wanted the property and everything. So we got us another trailer and we, uh, well, we rent the trailer for what it was. And uh, it's a pretty good sized spot down there, the off fenced in and everything. The guy that owned it, he was a surveyor and he said, well, he said, you take care of my place and we'll work it out with the rent because most stuff on that island is super expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, late at night, start hearing, something moaning out in the woods you know sort of mm, mm. and my wife's like you know, what is that noise and i'm like i don't know and i went out on the front porch one time and we'd had a pretty good amount of rain the uh, mm -hmm. day before and you could hear something on two legs walking out in that that area mm -hmm. and when i heard that i knew exactly well, I know man out there walking around because most people know me. You don't get close to my property or if I'm watching other people's property, you don't step foot on that property. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, my wife, she's like next morning, she's getting ready to go to work. She went on back to work after she worked for Piggly Wiggly down on Edisto Island. And uh, she's getting ready to leave. And she said, what is that big black stump down there? And I looked down there and I was like, I don't remember that thing down there. I said that I, I don't know what they I don't know what you're looking at. So she went on to work. She didn't say no more. I guess maybe go right by it, didn't pay much attention to it. I mean the dog I got shotgun, I walked down there. There wasn't no stump there. Wasn't nothing there. And I called her and I said, Well, uh, when you went down the driveway, I said, Was that big gigantic stump still standing there? And she said, Yeah. She said, but it didn't look like a stump. She said, it looked like something. It looked like it had hair on it. Mm. She said, but I just rode on by. And I mean, would that have been like just with a couple of feet uh, distance of what she was, you know, looking at this thing? Oh, yeah. That's close. And for, I don't know, for years, something would walk around. I couldn't, you know, didn't, I, I knew the whoops and I knew about the tree knocking and stuff like that, reading and listening stuff and everything. But being down there in the area I was in, basically isolated. 
Okay, so I didn't really know what I was dealing with. I know there's ghosts and there's phantoms and there's all kind of weird paranormal stuff out there. But to me, a Sasquatch is not paranormal. It's a flesh and blood creature of something. But as far as where it's from, why it's here, I don't know if it's part of, which I'll have a hard time pronouncing it, whether I'll just say the giants. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't embarrass myself, um, but these things are real, and I have seen about every place I've ever lived except where I'm at right now. I've heard them because when you're when you're outside late in the evening and everything, and you hear something go, whoo, 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 well, mm -hmm. you know that's a hoot out. Okay, and you hear it a couple of times, but then all of a sudden you hear. Something that goes, woo, 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 woo. And then all of a sudden you hear some go, la, 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 la. You know, it's funny you say that real quick. Uh, I get the, 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 ooh, 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 and then I get a, oh, oh, noise after mm -hmm. that. So I know it's not an owl because owl cannot go, oh, uh -uh. oh. No, they oh. don't, they don't have any, any yeah. dialect of that. No. But, uh, I mean, I, like I say, I've seen things, and I, like I told you, Earlier today, I told you, I said, I'll take a lie detector test against anybody. I'll take the truth serum or whatever. But something's wow. going on out there. It's like with all these people disappearing, what I think is up in what Alaska. Do you, what, do you, what do you think about that, the the missing 411, all these people in the missing park, you know, going missing in national parks, and they don't want to talk about it. They won't, well, they won't, they won't even uh, give back. They won't even give, you know, these parks won't even give – the families, you know, credence to say that even admit that they were missing in the parks. Well, uh, I was going to say some earlier about this. Now, I'll tell you, and I'll take full responsibility for whatever happened. But back, you remember Jackie Gleason, don't you? The actor, yes. Oh, yeah, the actor. Okay, uh, Truman, I think it was. Him and Truman were good friends. Okay, well, very, very good friends. Well, the president and Jackie Gleason meet up in uh, Duluth. I don't know. Duluth. Yeah, Duluth. Yeah, Duluth. Okay. Duluth. Yep. Yeah, okay. What they had done, and this goes beyond Roswell, they made an alliance with the aliens. Okay, where they talked about Area 51, it was a weather balloon, it was a bunch of BS. They know exactly what it was. But there was a piece of paper that was actually seen, even though it's an old photo, it's black and white. I might be able to go to YouTube, still pull this up. But they made an alliance with the aliens. You can abduct a certain amount of people. You can cattle mutilate. I mean, you can mutilate the cattle. And you can take a certain amount of people for food, food because experiment, I, food and experimentation, and whatever else they wanted uh -huh. to testing on us because yeah. they wanted to, you know, figure us out and you know that kind of thing. Well, see, the thing is, like I've asked several people, and I'll ask you, maybe some of your listeners. I try to keep up with what's going on with Planet X or yeah. Nubiru. Yeah, Nubiru. Okay, because that's where yeah, where. You, like I said, sometimes I have a hard time no, for that's all good. Word. But when you read about the Anunnaki and you read about certain things, the pyramids on Mars. Yeah. Now, really? There were no people up there. Where those pyramids come from? Mm -hmm. Same thing. They don't want people really exploring too much of the Antarctic anymore because there's yeah. a black pyramid up there. Military's got yeah. it all yeah. shut Military. off. Military, yep. Operation mm -hmm. High Jump. Yeah, the whole thing. Yep. Antarctica, Antarctica is deep. I mean, that, that that's that's uh, they say parts of Antarctica you can get to the Hollow Earth. Yeah. Well, there's actually somebody a couple of years ago, and they ripped it down just as soon as somebody posted it. See, a lot of people they want to show people what's going on. As soon as you post yeah. something. Well, it's not just Big Brother watching what's going on. Yeah. It's everybody that fact, doesn't fact check other people. Yeah. Yeah, well, some of that fact check. Fact checker, the fact checkers and all that and this, that, and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's like it's, this. 
even the even the governor of North Carolina when I came back last year. Mm. Uh, I will say his name. Most people know who he is. Even yeah, I know. I'm a third. <laughs> but I called and I said, well, if this stuff is so deadly, the COVID-19, how come nobody's mm. putting their mask in a biohazard bag? Yeah, and they're like, "Well, uh, we," I said, "Yeah, I said you're fooling the masses, but you're not fooling me." I even called the news agencies around Charlotte and everything, mm -hmm. asking the same question. They're like, well, "We're we're censored." I said, "What do you mean you're censored? The government tells us what we can say and what we can't." And I said, "Well, then why don't you stand up and tell the people the truth?" Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry about people that supposedly have died with the COVID. But if, like you say, if somebody, maybe they had some underlying health problem. Mm -hmm. Look how many people before 2019, we had 700,000 people die from cancer related problems. Yeah. You no, had a, no, no, no. What happened to the flu? <laughs> the flu yeah, just well, the it, flu, got, er oh, got eradicated yeah. because of COVID. So the yeah, flu, the flu is no yeah. longer, you know, but. But see, the symptoms. other thing is, the average person didn't pay attention enough. They would only hear, oh, my God, all these people are dying. Mm. Uh, they forget and realize that each hospital, even if you got killed in a car wreck, a motorcycle wreck, oh, I know whatever, yeah, I know. they got 30-some thousand dollars a person. So, yeah, yeah. you know, if you want to make a bunch of money, yeah, this one, we've had oh. thousands of people die in the last two weeks with COVID. But no, uh -huh. or is it going back to the 411 thing? Uh, I believe very seriously that it's alien related. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be the gray, might be mm -hmm. the reptilian. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've seen something that one other time in between the other things I was telling you where I lived at that trailer. Mm -hmm. That trailer was a, not the one on the other stove, but the one in Harrisburg. The one that in Harrisburg, was, yeah. Yeah. The one in Harrisburg, I had my dog in there. I clean him a shotgun, getting ready to put it back together and everything. Always kept my guns clean. And the dog's sitting there growling, not down the hall, but he's growling looking behind me. And I said, What are you? I said, What what is wrong with you? His name is Bear. And you know, I said, What in the world? Well, wintertime, okay, and i I had regular, you know, uh, I don't know whatever type of furnace was in that thing, but it wasn't based out that way. It come off the top, you know, I had the chimney off the top thing. I turned, looked over my right shoulder and here's steam coming up. Mm. And I'm thinking, well, that ain't a hot water line. Surely it's not, you know, cause I ain't got no water running and want anything. So I called my next door neighbor and his mother was the woman that owned the trailer park. It was Blacksburg trailer park, Harrisburg, North Carolina. Okay. But uh, I called my neighbor, which was the son, and I said, hey, dude. Uh-oh, we lost our guest. Got to get him back. Just give me one second. Okay, everybody. We lost our guest. I don't know if his um, if he upset the masses that maybe he's being, you know, got got blocked off or what. But he has to have a good phone and he has good internet, so I don't I don't think that would be the issue. He was just talking and he stopped talking out of nowhere. But he I did send him a reinvite, so I'll give him a couple minutes to try to get back on. How's everybody doing tonight? You enjoying the show? Got a great guest. Yeah, he's speaking the truth, all right. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I know you're here all night, Laura. You're two hours difference than me, so you got a little more time than I do. It's nine. It's nine. Nine. Uh, nine twenty by me. So, I'll I'll try to go as long as I can if he comes back, and if not, we'll have to do it again. I'll have to have him come back on. Um, maybe uh, 
next week or something, we could do a part two. But it is what it is. Um, you know, when, when people start dropping truth bombs, it, it happens on a lot of shows when you get people that, that know a lot of stuff and they, they have affiliates or they're, they, they've they been affiliated with certain entities that, that, you know, throughout the world, you know, agencies and entities, when, when they're, they're involved or when they've been had involvement with them and they start dropping too much truth, um, they will be silenced if they start, you know, pissing off the uh, the masses. So maybe that's what happened. I can't tell you, but uh, this guy, he, he, the stuff he's, you know, I've talked to him several times in the past, and he just he blows my mind away with some of the stuff he he, he, he tells me, and it, it's a real he's a real deal. I mean, he's been involved with um some certain agencies and military stuff and secret projects, and uh, here here we go. You still there, dude? I don't know what happened. There you go. You're the phone, back. The phone shut off. Okay. I mean, it literally shut down. Mm-hmm. And I, that, because the phone was totally charged. I ain't got nothing else running off out or anything. And it just shut off. I, I was just telling everybody, you, you, you must have, you, you, you must, you must have pissed somebody off tonight. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on with the volume either. Like I said, I probably said a little bit too much, but uh, can you hear me now? You sound great. You sound great. Okay. Well, like I say, I've had some very unusual yeah, things happen, and you sound great. not just with this phone. I've had I've had talking to people and thousands of miles away. Uh, their phones, I'd say something wrong. Their phones didn't just cut, you know, just lose the signal. Mm-hmm. It shut off. The only way we could get the phones going again is take the battery out, take the SIM card out, wait a few minutes, put mm-hmm. the SIM card back in, put the battery back in, need a whatever. I'd usually call them back. They're like, man, what did you do? It shut my phone off. Yeah. I said, I didn't do it. That's crazy. I said, but there's, there's certain things that trigger things that they, I don't know. But that's why I said I just I that's why I won't show my face. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't blame you. Criminal. I'm not a criminal. I've never been in jail. My records cleaner. Most people's teeth are. But the things I've experienced, I'm not going to make myself a target because I've heard certain things of people with the cryptos, uh, paranormal, right. alien st- type stuff. You get to talking. They see what you look. You know what you look like. Well, you're putting a target on your back because you know most people that have stepped out, like John Lennon, you know, he stepped out and telling people what's going on. And if somebody blows him away, Jimi Hendrix, um, I see, there's all kind of people out there. I, I mean, even the the McFade, 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 whatever, they what clipped him too. Kennedy, I mean. J- JFK, oh, yeah. Kennedy, he wanted to JFK. talk. To, he wanted to disclose UFOs back in the sixties, and they whacked him. Well, not just uh, one, just the UFOs. See, he wanted like Trump. Okay, everybody hated Trump. Well, look what we got in the White House now—a joke. And Obama's actually one pulling the strings. Okay, and people they might think, "Wow, this guy's where did he get this information from?" I know what's going on. And that's why people even on Facebook tell me they're like, Mike, because what your Facebook's doing to me right now is I put like, I put like on your thing about your motorcycle. I made a comment about your motorcycle. That's gone. They wiped it off. Really? Oh, yeah. They wiped it off. And then I had a friend of mine from California and she's messianic. She believes the Yahweh, Yeshua, keeps, keeps the Shabbat and everything. She said, Mike, she said, what they're doing to you they know you know something, and they're scared people are going to start listening to you. They're going to they're gonna understand that you're not, you know, I'm not trying to make a name for myself. I could care less, okay? I'm not, and that's, like I say, you know, if I was wanting to make a name for myself, yeah, I'd have my face out there. I mean, I've got a YouTube account. You ain't got my face out there. I got Instagram. I got Parlor. I got Boo Koodle. But uh, uh-uh. I'm not stupid. I'm not gonna put my yeah. face out there. Okay. Everybody else, they can do what they want to. But see, it's like you. It's like this. 
You put your face on Facebook. You got all your friends out here. They know exactly what they look like. They know what they drive. They know where they live. So when it goes to Roundup, wouldn't want to be in everybody's shoes. Mm -hmm. Just because it says Facebook. Okay. Same thing. I don't run like I told you. I don't run the app with Facebook. They can't stand it. It's like today. I had to spend 45 minutes get That's trying right. to get back on Facebook mm -hmm. because they wiped my account out. They're like, well, your account doesn't exist. And I'm like, oh, I know good and well it does. I've got certain friends. And they're asking yeah. for friends. But see, the thing is, uh, I don't know what why why this is because uh, will sound probably more than some people but uh i've got at least 10 people that used to be alive but they're no longer here on earth but they still have an account and the reason i keep them is because they'll say well who is one of your friends and i'll put so so you know so mm -hmm. they don't realize it okay and that's another way you get back on but like i said when you got facebook app they can turn on your locator they know exactly where you are they can turn oh, yeah. your computer or whatever. They can access your webcam. They oh, can right. do whatever they want to. They can they can access your microphone on yes, your does. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think now they're try they're getting ticked off now because I'm indulging in some secrets because see, all of yeah. a sudden your voice went sound like a, a, a robot. robot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well see they Facebook had tried something. I think it was last year when I pulled up on this, they had opened up something, um, AI at artificial intelligence. Yeah. And artificial intelligence has two numbers. One Oh, Oh, one, one, Oh, Oh, one, Oh, one, 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 one. Okay. It's that's all that's it's artificial. Binary. It's just a binary code. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, they're, binary. they're trying to block us. I can tell right now the airways are ticked. Okay, because I'm just closing some information they probably didn't want. But see, once Facebook found out that they were getting those eight artificial intelligence getting ready to take over, they shut it down. But see, if you go, I can't remember the name of the movie, and I keep hearing lots about it. People being misled about the COVID, people being misled about what's really what's going on over in Afghanistan. I mean, I hate that our guys just got slaughtered over there. The Marines, yeah. you know, if you go take out people, take the Americans out first. You're bringing back people you don't know. You're bringing back young guys. What's to say they're not radical? I've even heard that something could take place here in the United States that make 9-11 look like child's play. You know, I've heard of that too. For, because um, see, the for biggest. Viewers. Viewers. Mm -hmm. Well, I have never probably done that, but I don't know. I've always, like I said, my dad was involved in sport law enforcement. He was involved in the FBI, CIA, and a couple other things that most people don't want to talk about. But the thing is, remote viewing. Now I tell you i dabbled in it i don't know where i learned it but i could tell people a thousand miles away what color socks they're wearing can you hear me but you know and they'll be like yeah i can hear you yeah i can hear you yeah not like a robot yeah <laughs> well you actually froze the screen froze there for a second okay but uh Remote viewing to me also goes to the negative bloodline. Okay. There's something super special about that negative bloodline. There's been some past TV, you know, small mini series on, on TV about people with special abilities. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because like me, I have a sense that I can tell you, something getting ready to take place like i told you you buy that motorcycle when i saw you uh, yeah I, i'm sure you've rode them before i have too but the way people text the way people drive your wife probably loving what i'm getting ready to say but yeah. be super careful dude because when i tell somebody something i'm not telling them to bullshit them 
I'm telling you, you better be super careful. You know, you got a wife, you got a son, daughter, you got lots of friends out here and everything. Lots of people respect you. You got a good business. Uh, don't be a statistic, my friend. I mean, I'd love to ride. Uh, the the most beautiful bike I ever had was a 59 Panhead full dress. Oh, my God. But yeah. that was back long. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> and believe me, every time I've got one picture of it left and seeing the bikes. That, and this was American made. And see, most people buying the stuff, buying Harleys and stuff nowadays, and half the motorcycles made over in China. Really? Mm -hmm. But there I go. And there, I'm not sure if it's airwaves. See, I still got 4G on you. I got oh two God. bars. I don't know. But I got anyway, everything right now. So I'm good. Okay. But, you want to go, uh, another ten, go about another 10 minutes and then we'll call it off because. I'm afraid if we keep. Well, why don't you go ahead? I tell you what. Why don't you go ahead and talk to your listeners about some things? I'm sure you got some input, you know, because I'm a long talker, dude. I've had people tell me I could talk the horns we'll off. See if, we'll see if anyone has questions for you. How about that? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. If anyone has questions, just throw them up in caps or put a cue. If you got a question for for Mr. Mike, um, yeah. Let's see. Getting all right, no questions yet. I can go back. I think there was some. We do have Guardians of Our Galaxy. Yeah. What do you think about Agenda 23? <laughs> well, I knew about Agenda 21. And 21. That's when I first started off. Yeah. Agenda, what it was called, a U, UN Agenda. 21 to 2030 mm -hmm. now maybe 2031 2031 uh, yeah. it would be like back in obama's time i think it was when they talked about jade helms the major the major influx of basically martial law right taking over but it's like this um i don't have nothing to lose okay I, i'll make an expression to you and i don't not try to cuss or anything, but uh, what's the most dangerous person you've ever come across? Or what most the dangerous person would you think is out there? I'm going to say one that's deceiving us. Well, oh, well, that, yeah, that's that's the most dangerous as far as I'm Because everyone's going to believe okay. their bullshit and, and, and follow them and, and not take it for what it is, and, and then before they know it, we're all screwed. Well, what I'm referring to, when you don't have any family, mm. you ain't got no, I ain't got no kids. Mm. I got my dog, okay? Got another dog outside. But he's still a pup. He's still growing. But the most dangerous MF, you know what I'm saying? I won't say the word. I'm just going to say the, the initials of it. Yeah. That's the person that doesn't have anything to lose. Yeah. I could care less, okay? Right. You come after me, you better come with the best you got. And I've told that to plenty of people. I've told the law enforcement. I've told it to the military. I'm like, listen, you want me? Come on. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to back down. You're not sticking a damn needle in my arm. Mm -hmm. You're not going to put me in handcuffs. I'd be like, uh, like I tell people, they're like, why would you want to be that way? I'm like, what have I got to lose? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be thrown in some concentration camp. I'm not going to exactly. be told what I can do, what I can't do. If you if you look at all the Walmart stores around the world, they got one thing in common. Mm -hmm. They look like a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. No right. windows. They got the the area usually where the garden area is. Well, that's all you know oh, wow. uh, bars. Okay, mm -hmm. right. a gigantic bar. parking lot. Yeah. No, that can be converted into something real quick. Oh yeah, I've been getting reports of what's going on down in in uh, I think down in New Zealand. There was They're conspiracy literally. theory about Walmart, some WalMarts that were shutting down, and they were they were bringing military buildings in, and they're yeah. talking about doing drills. But people thought they were really turning it, converting it to like a detention center. Well, that was part of the Jade Helm thing. Mm -hmm. That's part of the Global UN Agenda Twenty One of Twenty Thirty One. 
because see what they want to do and they have the technology to do it you know they want to force what they call the rapture okay the calling away which i'm surprised they hadn't tried okay but what i'm waiting to see which i've seen them before and i'm sure some of your listeners have probably seen them but they don't want to talk about it because they think people think they're crazy uh there's spacecraft that come into our atmosphere that's over a seven mile wingspan now the mothership no sound motherships. yeah those are motherships now it sure is funny around the world mexico brazil china russia all of them yeah they admit to it but the united states oh no we, we don't have anything it was a weather balloon it, it was a bag floating through did you well, see back i think it was 2019 or between 2019 i think and last few months or whatever some woman she was said there was a humongous craft floating over charlotte okay they tried to dismiss it and say it was a big gigantic garbage bag really but the maneuvers this thing was making oh yeah well they've seen them in new york too you know like I say, most people, and I think another thing is to keep people looking down at their cell phones mm -hmm. instead of looking up. That's the biggest so thing. If you're look looking up. at your cell phone it's playing a game, up. yeah, you know, you're playing a game, you're you're FaceTiming somebody, mm -hmm. uh, you're watching movies. I mean, it's cool for me because I don't have TV. I got rid of, I hadn't watched TV in years. People say, well, how do you know all this information? Well, I'm not going to divulge my secrets. Lots of stuff that I know is either I've studied or I've read or I've firsthand experienced some. We got a question see, for you here. With my blood type alone. Go ahead. You see it on the screen? Let's see. It says, Do you see us winning this war? If the people get off their ass, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go back to military term. I'm not out to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm tired of seeing the American people sit back. What the hell are you doing? You're waiting to the last moment. I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you something else that will blow you away. Now, you being from up north, I have no problem with that. But my great-great-grandfather was a Revolutionary War soldier. He fought for our freedom. Uh -huh. He came back he didn't get killed. He came back to Pickens County, South Carolina, where he's still buried. And he had 12 kids. My great-grandfather was a bodyguard for Robert E. Lee through the whole Civil War. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in, I'm not going to say a war, but in the military. I did Civil War reenacting. I, I with the 1st North Carolina Cavalry. Matter of fact, I, I got some pictures like i said i got some things to show you blow you away i know things out there that most people couldn't even imagine i've been on coast to coast i've been called call in talker speaker whatever you want to call it i knew art bell and all them mm -hmm. art bell had to leave the united states because they threatened to kill him because he's exposing way too much okay? he was dropping too much truth, like, right. Right. oh yeah and see they don't want the truth but yeah the only way we're going to win this war against the corrupt government is everybody get off your ass, come together. I don't care what your nationality is. Come together. People ask me, well, we don't have a leader. Really? You can't you you can't you can't get out there and stand up for your own rights. You can't get out there and stand up for your children's rights, your grandchildren. What are you gonna tell your grandchildren? Oh, well, I was scared. I, 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 I just didn't know what to do. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. Okay? You get out here. You make a stand. Because if you don't, they're going to come in and they're going to slaughter you. Everybody is taking this stupid experimental synthetic drug. There's going to be millions of people die. And they're going to say, oh, well, they died with uh, cancer. They died with this. Uh-uh. How did these shots takes 10 years <laughs> for any vaccine to be approved? But see who wasn't making any money? The pharmaceutical companies. They've made billions of dollars since 20. Well, since these vaccines have been coming out, I've had quite That's a few good. friends of mine take these shots. Uh -huh. 
and quite a few of them ain't alive anymore. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, like I told you months ago, you said something, you thought about taking a shot. I said, dude, don't do it. Don't do it. The, the thing is, you keep your immune system. I make my own antibodies. I make chloride silver. I've been making it for years. I'm 59 years old. I don't take pharmaceutical pills. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have low blood pressure. I got a little bit of pain, but if you've been through what I've been through, yeah, you'd have it. But I don't take pain pills. I have the willpower that I want to stand up. It's like so I told somebody, you give me 25,000 heavily armed men and women that no military, and I'll show you what you do. Mm-hmm. But see, nobody wants to stick together. It's just like the Oklahoma bombing. Timothy McVeigh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hate those kids got killed. I hate they blew, you know, blew that building and killed those little kids and everything. Well, wasn't see, there was a third candidate? person. Huh? Wasn't he a Manchurian candidate? Yeah. He was yeah. brainwashed. Well, see, there was a third. Well, see, there was a third. Uh, I'm, I see. What I'm talking about, the Oklahoma bomber. I think his name was Timothy McVeigh, if I'm not mistaken. I might yeah, be wrong. Timothy McVeigh. Okay, but see, the, there was a third person. I met that third person, and he was radical. Mm-hmm. Okay, he didn't care who you were. But see, it's like this. You got all these people coming over the border. None of them have the vaccine shot. None of them are sick. Look at, did you see anybody over in Afghanistan wearing a mask? Nope. Did you see anybody over there worried about anything? It's all about control. Nope. It's all about the new world order. It's all about the Rothschilds. It's all about the, the Bilderberg, the riches, the multi-trillionaire. Trump was a billionaire. When you are a multi-trillionaire, you don't you, you feel like you're totally invincible. Okay? Oh, yeah. It's like um, Napoleon. Mm-hmm. Okay, little boy blue. He's standing there with his little outfit on. He's got his right hand in his shirt. Uh, Do you know what that stood for? With his right hand over his heart. Uh, that was a, a Masonic. Okay. The, that was the, that was uh, not Messianic, but that's uh, another clue for shrine the shriners the 33rd degree okay the illuminati yeah i mean it's like i told you a couple of i guess it was about a month ago i got a mysterious text come through my phone and this person's like well you know would you like to and i thought it's a joke okay so, but went into detail on this they're trying to recruit me in to the illuminati Oh wow, that happened to me. They said you join, you join with us. We'll send you five hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, really? You gonna send me five hundred thousand dollars? I said, I'm gonna tell you like it is. Like I told my cousin, he's thirty third degree uh, Shriner. I said, if I gotta have a secret handshake and I gotta have a secret password, you can take all that secretive stuff and shove it. Now he's a retired general. I don't really care what you are. But yeah, if you go to win the war, get off your lazy ass, get off the couch, uh-huh. protect your family. Because it's like this when all hell breaks loose, you're living in a the city, they cut the power. You're not going to have any water. You're not going to have any food. You're not going to have any heat. Nope. What are you waiting for? What are American people? But the thing that burns me the most, where in the hell are the three percenters? Where's all the militia at? Where's the patriots at? Yep. Is it all a bunch of bullshit? Trump's not coming back. If people, I mean, he might come back in 2024, but it's like this. Any great leader, you don't turn and walk away. Okay? What the hell has the Democratic Party ever done for any of our military? What have they ever done for anything for the United States? When Obama was in there, all he wanted Nothing. I'm not going to say all the Muslims are bad, but what did he want coming into our country? Radical. Their biggest thing that they want is to have their, I can't remember that flag, but they want the 
ISIS. Islam flag. Yeah, they want ISIS. ISIS. They want the ISIS flag flying over Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like this. The American people, if you don't stand up, it's your own damn fault. Mm-hmm. But somebody like me, I'll make a stand. I know what's going to take place, and I don't care who if you get in my way. It's like this. You're either my friend or you're my foe. And if you're my foe, I'll wipe you off the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. And I don't care who hears it. So I hope I didn't skew your listeners too bad there. I know no, still- dude, you're, you're, you're dropping <laughs> choke bombs, man. That's all good. Um, I well, think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna close it up for, for now. And I hear you. Definitely want to do this again. I'm just gonna okay. give some time to some time to um, recuperate. Well, like I said, I can talk ears off a of billy goat. So no, no, we will we'll, we'll, we'll keep talking and we'll have a meetup soon. But I, I think just to give time for everything to cool off. Oh yeah, we, we probably started a lot of um, facilities tonight, so I don't want to. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be well, like I wake said, up tomorrow. My Facebook account's closed and my YouTube shut down, and you know that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, hey, it wasn't your fault. Nah, For I know. whoever wants to listen, my name is Mike Pearson. I walk. I'm. I am my father's son. You come after me, you better come with the best you got. Absolutely. So, I had a good time. Thank you for letting me be on your. I guess what do you call it? Podcast, whatever. Yeah, sure. But like I said, people get out there. I mean, it's like this. The Democrats out there were tearing up stuff, burning down stuff and everything. And what the Republicans do? Sit. Uh-huh. Get off your lazy ass. Get out there. So what if you go to jail? Better than going to a FEMA camp. Better than having your wife, your children molested. Uh-huh. Better than having everything ripped away from you. Because if you don't stand up, there's nobody going to come stand up for you. Exactly. Well, I'll be ready. I'll be ready, locked and loaded. So that's all I got. Well, I am too, bro. <laughs> I am too. Well, thank you, Thomas. I had a good time. And Just all us, your listeners us, out stay, here, stay. God bless all of them. Stay on, stay, name. On. stay on for a minute. When I yeah. end this, and we'll just yeah. talk for another five minutes and, cl- and conclude it up. But everybody, thank you for joining tonight. Um, I appreciate you coming on and supporting the show. Uh, Mike's a great guy, and he knows a lot of stuff, and he drops truth, and that, that's m- my main, you know, agenda for for doing this is is bringing the truth to the people because you got to know the truth because the truth will set you free, and just too many people in the darkness, you got to know what's going on in this world because without that, you you know, you got to have knowledge. Knowledge is power. All right, man. Good night, everyone. <laughs>